man, all these GPU launches and everything else that's going on, it's crazy. Well, I've started to see a little bit 6800s coming in stock at Micro Center. So I thought what better time than to take a look at the lineup of OEM 6800s. And I've got the Sapphire RX 6800 right here. Let's take a look. All right, first in the box, what do you get? Well, I mean, you should know, if you're thinking about buying one of these, you should have done your homework on the RX 6800, what its features have and uh, what its, you know, differentiating qualities are in the market, that kind of thing, especially if you've found one in stock and you're able to buy it. This is a high-end card, make no mistake. This is designed to play current and future AAA titles at fairly high resolutions. 1440p certainly, 4K maybe with a little bit of tweaking. There are higher end cards from AMD, notably the 6800 XT and the 6900. However, the 6800 still has 16 gigs of VRAM, which is really nice, especially if you're into content creation. So this 6800 is a two and a half slot design. It's not a two slot design like the reference 6800. So we would expect to see much better temperatures than the reference design 6800 as a result of that, but it could create considerations that you need to worry about if you're doing a build. This is of course the Nitro Plus version of the 6800. We've also got a quick installation guide and some, you know, note about the manufacturer to comply with, uh, with rules in Germany. And that's it. There's no special cables. There's no driver CD because you don't need that. You don't always want to download the latest drivers. The aesthetic is a nice black and silver aesthetic with a little bit of blue accents. It's a triple fan design. We've got a couple of different sizes, including full pass through at the rear of the card for about 50% of the available area of the fan. It's similar to the reference design that we saw from NVIDIA. This is also similar to the designs that we saw as far back as the, uh, the Radeon Fury. Radeon Fury was a really short card in terms of the PCB and uh, it generated a lot of heat and the card design would let heat sort of pass all the way through the card, which has sort of come in vogue again in, in, in design this time around. And we can see that, you know, the last half of this part of the heat sink is doing that. You can also see that we've got five pretty substantial heat pipes on this side of the cooler. And we've got those heat pipes run all the way to this side and it's open on the end there. So pretty good. We've got two eight pin power connectors that are necessary for running this card. So it's gonna use quite a bit of power. Another departure from the AMD reference design is no USB-C output on this card. You've got HDMI and three DisplayPort. I think that's probably a better choice than the USB-C connection, but if you were thinking about using this for VFIO or pass-through or something like that, it doesn't have an onboard USB controller, so it's maybe not as amenable for that, but otherwise it does work fine with pass-through. We've also got a BIOS switch. So you've got cool and quiet or performance, although which is which is not labeled. Overall, from a cursory examination, I can tell you that this card is up to the very high standard that Sapphire sets for build quality, engineering, and uh, you know attention to detail with the assembly. So they've done a good job putting this card together. Um, you can see that you know depending on what you're you're doing for your build, that this is a taller card. Um, but it's nice to also see that there's not any you know warranty void if removed stickers because your warranty's not technically void for removing stickers, which perhaps suggests that you know you could modify this for water cooling or whatever you might choose. Now, in terms of software differentiators, Sapphire does actually have something that no other uh, Radeon OEM does, and that's Trix Boost. And really, for Trix Boost, you gotta see it to believe it. So Trix Boost can be a really great way to boost your frame rates a little bit at a cost of a little bit of resolution. But you can layer on other features in the AMD software stack, things like Fidelity FX, in addition to all the cool features in the AMD Radeon software stack, if you're really close, if you're like at 57 or 58 or 55 FPS, and you wanna boost those minimum frames or you want to just edge up performance just a little bit so you're in a solid 60 territory without lowering your resolution or doing something with a little bit less granularity such as Fidelity FX, Trix Boost is a neat feature that works only with Sapphire cards. So, you know, Sapphire's put some work into that. It's their own special sauce. It's definitely worth taking a look. There are other little details that Sapphire likes to do on their cards that 
make things just a little bit better from the user's perspective. One is you can take out just a couple of screws to be able to replace the fans should any fans fail and under warranty over the lifetime of the card. This is a 6800, not a 6800 XT. It's, it's a cost savings. But really, is there that much of a difference between a 6800 XT and a 6800? If you're leveraging Trix Boost along with Radeon image sharpening, I don't think so. If you look at these images side by side, in terms of visual fidelity, you'd be hard pressed to tell a difference. And to be sure, Trix Boost is rendering less pixels and then relying on Radeon image sharpening to scale it up. But unlike other technologies, it lets you pick an in-between resolution. You can have more pixels than 1440p, 2560 by 1440, um, but less than 3840 by 2160, less than full 4K. So it's kind of nice you can dial it in for the performance that you want and the visual fidelity that you want. And this is also like, we got to step back for a second here because this is kind of a landmark. We're talking about visual fidelity more than raw performance, even when thinking about 4K. And for older titles like Air Tomb Raider benchmark, I mean, 1600 is entirely playable at 4K. You can use Trix Boost and Radeon Image Sharpening and uh, you know, ensure that you're uh, over 100 FPS at all times with little to no uh, change in any visual fidelity that you can see in the game. So I feel like with most current gen titles, you know, not just Tomb Raider, but looking at other games in our, in our lineup, I feel like with most titles, you are in a position, if you want to fiddle with the settings, you can find the exact performance or visual fidelity setting that you're looking for. And this is nice on a 6800 because this is the you know least expensive flagship class GPU from AMD. And just a generation ago, this level of performance was going to cost you over a thousand dollars. This is a pretty good situation to be in if you're a gamer and you're looking for the high-end performance. Now to be sure, in terms of like uh, compatibility, <laughs> there are some gotchas with Trix Boost. For one, widescreen monitors, they're out. I'm surprised this is still a thing, but supporting widescreen monitors is just too problematic. So it's, it's still not there. So if you've got a, an ultra wide or an ultra ultra wide 21 by nine, ain't happening. At least with Trix Boost. You can still use Radiant Image Sharpening, some of the other technologies, but not Trix Boost. The other thing is that it's not compatible with all games necessarily. So like Dirt 5, which is one of the better performing titles on, on AMD. I mean, this thing is entirely playable at 4K. Uh, ray tracing sort of aside, ray tracing accepted because they're still working on that, at least in Dirt 5, but custom resolutions in Dirt 5 is not a thing. If you turn Trix Boost on and you don't change the resolution, you're not going to realize the performance benefit. And if the game has hard-coded resolutions well, you're kind of stuck. So it's not a perfect solution, but it's pretty darn good. If we take Trix Boost out of the picture so that we have something to compare to in terms of uh, the performance of this versus the reference 6800, uh, we can see that the Sapphire is boosting consistently fairly higher than the reference design. I mean, it's only 25 to 35 megahertz here and there, but when you're in a pinch in a game, that can make all the difference in the world in terms of steadier frame rates, uh, uh, or that can make all the difference in the world in terms of steadier overall frame times, etc., etc., etc. So. If you look at our game's other performance, you can see that the Nitro Plus edition of the 6800 does have a nice little performance bump over the reference version of the 6800 from AMD. It's a bigger cooler, it's quieter, it's on right now, you know, doing stuff and you can barely hear it. And that's in an, you know, sort of an open configuration. I would say that this would be a good choice if you are in a more cooling challenged situation with your case because the cooler can move a lot of air. It's a bigger cooler than the reference 6800. Uh, but you know, you do have the, the Nitro Plus uh, performance bump if you're running it in the performance BIOS mode with the switch in the appropriate place. So I really think that uh, they really put in the work in order to differentiate themselves in the market from other 6800 providers. I'll also say that uh, Sapphire's RGB aesthetic here is an interesting one. You can of course run you know, unicorn mode if you want for all of the colors of the rainbow, but you can also pick a color, do a color themed build, whatever in terms of your RGB controller, the logo and the strip and everything else, it's ARGB. So depending on what your control software is, you've got a lot of flexibility for how exactly you want the RGB to behave if that's your thing. 
The other thing to consider is that not every 6800 V BIOS is exactly the same. So if you're using it for some of those more exotic use cases, like on Linux or with PCIe pass-through or anything like that, then uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that the VBIOS actually does work correctly. And so like the reference 6800, this worked really well. As long as I fiddled with the CSM parameter, like on some motherboards with CSM uh, disabled, or CSM enabled, it would create problems properly initializing the VBIOS for the virtual machine. If all that sounds like gobbledygook and you're not considered, you know, you're not, you're not worried about passing through a GPU uh, with VFIO in a virtual machine, don't worry about it. It's fine, it works really well. But there have been a couple of reports of other, other OEMs having some trouble with their VBIOS or in certain configurations. Also notably on X99, so I'm doing some pass through on X99, which I suspect is related to the, you know, we need full UEFI support, full modern UEFI support for these cards to be able to do the pass through and reset correctly. And uh, I think that means that on older platforms, it's gonna be a little bit more problematic. Me, I'm more concerned about raw performance and numbers, but overall, I'm once again impressed by what Sapphire has done with this card. You, you can clearly tell that they know what they're doing. They're good at bending cards, and they're good at really pushing things to the envelope. This 6800 does narrow the gap a little bit between a 6800 and a 6800 XT. So if you're looking to save a few bucks, then something like this... Uh, might be a good choice over the 6800 XT, especially if you're not pushing those higher resolutions. You still get 16 gigs of VRAM, and you can still leverage technologies like Trix Boost to sort of, you know, funge the resolution and the number of pixels that you're rendering in order to get the performance that you're looking for. I've got the Acer Predator CG9 behind me, which is, you know, FreeSync. It's like FreeSync, but it's also NVIDIA certified FreeSync. Um, for NVIDIA cards and stuff like that and I've been using this with both team green and team red builds and FreeSync on that even with the 6800 It's a really really incredible experience having the panel synced to the display For those times where you know I drop a little bit below 60 FPS But mostly we're cruising at like 80 90 FPS at the full native uh, 4k resolution or beyond if I'm using Trix boost It's a nice gaming experience. It really is. So there you go. That's been a quick look at the Radeon 6800, the Nitro Plus Edition from Sapphire. It sure seems like they've done a really good job with this. But uh, if you pick up one of these and you want to show off your build or anything like that, you know, come to the forums at Level 1. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.